Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we are making salt bars. Uh, I have made in the past sea salt bars. Well, today we are making Himalayan pink salt bars. That's gonna be the salt we're using in them. It's a very fine grind, if you can see that. Um, and I just think that it's a wonderful, wonderful salt. Something uh, very unique about salt bars is uh, they do have a gentle exfoliating, but it's a very soft feel on your skin. You know, household water softeners use salt to soften the water. So this kind of has that same effect. It's a very soft lather feel. I just love them and they are good for your skin and they do not dry your skin out. <laughs> I get asked that a lot. Don't salt bars dry your skin? No, they don't. They actually exfoliate and make a, um, wonderful carrying experience for the butters and things that are in the recipe, which I will share in the description box below so you can make salt bars too. They are fantastic. Let me tell you the fragrance that I'm using today. We're coming into springtime and I have breezes and sunshine from Nature's Garden. Oh, this smells nice. It is bright and beautiful smelling and uh, it just made me think of all things spring and summer. Uh, it says that it doesn't cause any issues in soap. I haven't used this before, but it got good reviews. So we're gonna try it today in our salt soap and for the color. So I will split this batch in half and I'm going to use sunshine yellow because you know, breezes and sunshine, right? I gotta roll with the theme. So sunshine yellow will be half the portion and then I'll just pour into cavity molds. Uh, another thing about salt soap is that it hardens really fast and it, it cures out rock hard. These are very long lasting bars. So you get a lot of bang for your buck with a salt bar. Um, you can make them in a loaf mold, but you have to watch it. And as soon as it solidifies, even while it's still going through saponification and it's still warm, you have to cut it. Otherwise it will just turn to crumbly bits if you let it cure and go overnight. Um, so what I do, because I get busy and I don't have time to come down and check and whatever, I don't do salt bar loaves, I do cavity molds and I'm gonna be using, I have a whole bunch. <laughs> These cavity molds, they're flowers and to me they just, scream spring and summer sunshine right sunflowers right and they're so pretty i've done i've done this before in another video i loved how they came out so we're going to do it again so this is kind of a repeat but i'm doing a different fragrance today and i figured i'd bring you along with and share the recipe again i have shared it before on other videos um so i'm going to get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some really wonderful not sea salt, I almost said sea salt, make some really wonderful Himalayan pink salt bars. So I'm getting ready to add my dry additives and before I do, I made a little change. I am going to add my mica, my beautiful sunshine yellow mica, right into the oils here because I just want, I'm not gonna split it and do a swirl in the cavity molds. They come out uneven and I just want them all to be this beautiful sunny yellow. So let me get the mica blended in here and then we will add our additives in. And while I'm blending this, let me tell you what's going on in this pot today. I have 48 ounces of coconut oil. I have six ounces of castor and three ounces of cocoa butter and three ounces of shea butter. That's what's going on in the pot today. Sorry, I'm talking and I lost track of my measuring here. So let me get this mica blended in and then we will add our dry additives. Isn't that pretty? I do have the fragrance already in here. Um, the fragrance oil that I'm using today had a usage rate of 5%. And so when I added up the total volume of this soap, I put just shy of four ounces of fragrance in, but please check the usage rate on the fragrance that you're using, if you're using a fragrance or essential oil, because they're not all the same usage rate. So you can't just go on the amount that I'm using. You need to know, uh, look up the usage rate of the fragrance that you're using. All right, we've got the mica dispersed. Let's get our dry additives and I'm gonna do kale and clay. This is my two table, oops, spilling. This is my two tablespoon scoop. This is a much smaller batch than I normally do. So I will do a shy, maybe one and a half, one tablespoon of kale and clay in here, not filled up all the way. So we'll do that. I've got my colloidal oats, again, a shy scoop about a tablespoon or so. And I have coconut milk powder just because I thought it went really well with the salt bars. I love it. Uh, my aloe vera lye solution is off to the side and I will talk about that when we get to it. So it's gonna be an aloe and coconut milk soap. So again, just a shy scoop. This is about 
I'd say one and a half tablespoons for today's volume. All right, let me get that cleaned up. I'm gonna get this blended in and then we will bring our live pot over and talk about what's going on in there. So real quick, before I add my lye solution in here, I was thinking about my molds. Last time I did these little flower molds, I have them on trays so that I can move them if I need to. Um, I waited till I unmolded, then I took a mica and alcohol solution and painted the little seeds and they looked so cute. But today I wanna to try something new. What I have here is my chocolate brown mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus in a little bit of a light carrier oil. And I'm going to paint them down in here before I pour the soap in. This is, uh, I'm just gonna try this and see. And I'm hoping that it won't get displaced too much and spread around. But I'm gonna go ahead around here and just paint all of my little seeds brown before I get my lye mixture in and get moving forward. And I'm hoping that it won't shift too much when I pour the soap in there and that it'll just stay and look like little seeds down in there. So let me go get all of these painted up and then we will come back and get to making this soap. Oh, and I guess I will tell you right now, I do have 28 ounces of my beautiful Himalayan pink salt off to the side, which we will add after we get this to emulsion. All right, I've so got all my little seeds painted in and it's time to add the lye mixture. What I have here is 19 ounces, a little over, like 19.3 or 19.5 ounces of liquid. And I did a 50-50 split between aloe vera juice and distilled water. You could use all aloe, you could use all water, but just 19 ounces of liquid. And that's not my normal steep discount, water discount, but um, you need the time to play with this because this soap hardens up so fast so anyway 19 ounces of liquid here that has some cane sugar dissolved in it and some tussa silk fibers in there i did not use sodium lactate because of the salt soap the high coconut you do not have to worry about this hardening it's going to do great so uh no sodium lactate today there's the aloe vera lye solution and i will just pour it in here slowly and again we're just going to get up to emulsion and then we will add the salt in and see how it's going because you can always stick blend more later. So I am using 28 ounces of the fine grind pink Himalayan salt and uh, that's wonderful. You could use a little more, you could use 30 ounces, you could use 20 ounces. It's, you know, you can play around with the amount. I like that amount for the saturation it gives. Um, I think it's a great amount. The thing is, uh, I'm gonna want to get to emulsion, add the salt, and then you wanna get to a nice trace so that all the salt is suspended. If you pour it when it's too liquid, the salt can sink, and um, you just wanna make sure that the batter is thick enough where the salt stays di dispersed really well. So I definitely have emulsion. And now it's time to just add in our salt. And you know, it's not very fancy. You just plop it all in there. And then you've got to mix it and make sure you don't have any salt chunks or blobs, if you will. So getting the air bubbles out. I just like to stir before I, I'm not even pulsing the stick blender. I'm just stirring with it to make sure I don't have any dry pockets of salt. All right, and a little bit of blending and then we'll get to pouring.
poured and as I was pouring my little mica seeds definitely floated so it'll be interesting to see how the faces of these sunflowers look tomorrow but with this recipe I got 29 and these will be about three and a half ounce flowers so that's how many soaps we have I'm just gonna let these sit overnight and we will unmold tomorrow and see how those little sunflower faces came out I hope they're not too disastrous but we will see in the morning. All right, it's the next day, and uh, we're gonna unmold these, and I already know that those little brown um, seeds that I put in there migrated when I poured. So let's see how big of a mess I made, because I was actually thinking about it last night. I couldn't sleep, I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I have an idea, if I'm really unhappy with how they look, oh, it's not bad. But I'm thinking as I go, I might do a little piping on top. I'm not sure, we're gonna see, but see how even when I poured very carefully, it sort of flooded over. It's not bad. I just love the little petals on here, and they smell so good today. All right, let's pull out one of these. Yeah, they just flooded over a little. It's really not bad. I'm going to unmold all of these and decide if I have any that are really obnoxious. I don't know. I might just let it go. This is the artisan crafting, right? So uh, these two molds weigh approximately the same. These are heavy. So these weigh about four to four and a half ounces now. After the cure, they'll weigh about three and a half to four ounces. Uh, these will cure for four to six weeks, even though they're nice and rock hard. But um, so these are a little smaller circumference, but they're thicker. So these actually weigh the same. So let me get the rest of these unmolded and we'll see how the seed portion looks. And I will think about it all as I'm unmolding. But uh, this fragrance behaved really well. Yeah, oh man, I wish that it hadn't done that. So high in sight, I like how I did the original time where I just filled the molds last time I made salt soap and then came in afterwards with a little mica and alcohol and painted them on after. That's what I will do in the future. So this was a good trial run. Oh, that's not so bad, They're so pretty. So anyway, like I said, this fragrance was very nice to work with. Um, the trace was slow, even with all the salt and stuff in there. It was very manageable. I really like how it smells, very fresh. So all of that is good. These are so good for your skin. So even though it's not quite as tidy and pretty as I wanted, I think these are fabulous. Hope you give the recipe a try. If you do try this recipe, let me know how you like it. I would love to hear back and what fragrances and colors you used. Um, it would be great. This would be wonderful uh, with essential oils and natural clays. Yeah, that kind of went up. I don't know, it kind of looks cool though. Well, anyway, yeah, you could twist this recipe with your own fragrance and color scheme and make it however you like. Well, let me talk about if you do this recipe and you want to do it in a loaf mold, one of the things that you do is you just watch it and test the sides, like come by, touch the side of your soap as it's going through gel phase, and as soon as it is hard enough to remove from the mold, you want to put your gloves on, of course, because it's still doing its soapy thing. Put your gloves on, remove it from the mold, slice it, and then you can put it back in your loaf mold and let it finish saponifying and cooling in there. And that way it will hold its shape because it'll, you know, you want to cut it while it's still a little flexible. That is how you do a salt loaf. But um, like I say, I get distracted and <laughs> I am afraid I will miss that window. It's a narrow window of time that you have to cut your soap in. So... Um, I just, I love the cavity molds for salt bars, but there is a way to do it if you don't. Soap chemistry, it never gets old for me. Well, what do y'all think? I wish you were here. I think I'm gonna let the little seeds ride the way they are. It's, you know, it is what it is, I'll learn. They're not as tidy as I'd hoped, but I think they're still really pretty. So I think we're just gonna let it fly and I'm not gonna do any piping on top. But that's one of the beautiful things is if this was terrible, like totally dispersed out, I could just come in, make a little teeny batch of soap piping and do some petals and things and make it look good. So it's still, it's not a waste. So when you make a soap and it doesn't turn out exactly as you wanted, you always have options. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. And if, again, if you give the recipe a try, I would love to hear how you're liking it. 
And uh, don't forget to hit that uh, like button, subscribe, bell for notifications, all that good stuff so you don't miss a thing going on in the soap studio. And have a wonderful day. Okay, I'm adding these pictures after I got done uh, editing this video, and I wanted to show you what two weeks after I put these on the curing racks, this is the mellow yellow they came out to be.